let's start with uh, One Direction, This Is Us. I was in um, the street, Dean Street, uh, a few weeks ago, and I bumped into Morgan Spurlock. Is this in London Soho? In London Soho, yeah. Um, Dean Street, Wardour Street, Soho Square is kind of heart of movie land in London. And I bumped into Mo Morgan Spurlock, who's come on the show a couple of times, firstly when he did Super Size Me, and then when he did uh, The Greatest Movie Ever Sold. And I said, oh, hey, how you doing? He said, fine. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm just finishing the One Direction movie. I said, really? Have you done the One Direction movie? And he said, yeah. I said, what are they like? He said, oh, they're really nice. And I thought, yeah, I bet you're just saying that because, you know, obviously you're contractually obliged to say that, you know, I'm a journalist. So the One Direction movie, This Is Us, Morgan Spurlock has directed it. It basically, um, it cuts between uh, footage of them on stage doing this enormous world sellout tour that ends up at the O2 Arena. And then behind the scenes stuff in which we get to, to see them behaving as, in inverted commas, normal people, you know, off camera in a way which I suppose some people would say is kind of, uh, it's like the X factor behind the scenes stuff, but on the big screen. Anyway, here's a clip. Louis, you're on that X. I was never really a fan of boy bands before One Direction. I'm a massive boy band fan myself. Uh, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC. When people say you're in a boy band, I, I'm like, yeah, I am, but I'm in a cool boy band. So I'm like, okay, what else? Right from the start, we were always very vocal that we couldn't follow the boy band stereotypes. Choreographed dance routines and everything's the same. Here we go! Go Niall! And taking the crowd with you! Paul is our choreographer. He gets bored, I think. Niall, up that ramp. Harry, come on! It's a bit of a free-for-all. They hate dancing with a passion. And it goes to a whole sort of different level. So, obviously, you know from the psycho label at the beginning of the film, this is a very, very packaged product. And also, Simon Cowell... Is Simon Cowell, yeah. yeah Simon, well, it, it, it's, it's psycho is the, you know, is the company. And then Simon Cowell is actually in it. Although Simon Cowell being interviewed comes across like somebody doing an impression of Simon Cowell. It's really weird. He looks unusual. You, all you can think is that Marina Hyde thing about Simon Cowell is the karaoke Sauron. So I know all of that and I do understand that there are certain points which you see in the film, you think, oh, that's kind of the Morgan Spurlock stuff. So there's one bit in which the One Direction fans are all going, you know, oh, we're crazy, we love them, we're crazy. And then it cuts to, he says, well, are they crazy? And it cuts to a scientist going, no, they're not crazy. Here's you have the brains, cuts the brain in half, the neuron, the serotonin, and the thing. And he does the, you know, chemical explanation and says, no, it's One Direction, they're not crazy, they are just in a state of excitement. And that's a very Morgan Spurlock touch. For the rest of it, however, it is much more standard stuff of them on stage doing the gigs and them, you know, talking to the camera in a way which which has the appearance of, of naturalness. Now, obviously, I know whilst looking at it, Simon Cowell, complete control. I don't doubt for one minute that the product is stage managed to within an inch of its life. That said, it's actually kind of fun and kind of cute, and they come across really nicely and really well. And I've now seen it twice. I saw it first in 3D at the press screening, and then I went to see it again in 2D because uh, my daughter wanted to go and see it. She's not a huge One Direction fan, but just thought it looked like fun and really enjoyed it. And the funny thing is, it, I mean, people are going to be very sniffy and people are going to be very snotty and people who, you know, go, oh, I hate One Direction, they're boy band. Manufacturing. If you hate boy, One Direction, exactly. don't go and see it. Exactly. If you hate One Direction, why would you go and see One Direction? This is us. On the other hand, there are things in it that, I mean, for a start, they genuinely seem funny. I mean, when they're on stage, you know, goofing around, they're funny. They have a, There's a touch of the monkeys about them. You know, the monkeys with a double E rather than the monkeys with an E-Y-S. I know who the monkeys are. No, no, OK, but some listeners may not be familiar because not everybody is over 50 like we are. So there is a touch of the monkeys' goofiness about them. They do also appear to have an awareness of their own potential shelf life. They have conversations about what we're going to do when this is all finished. Isn't it weird that there's going to be a day when we're not doing this? And one of them says rather touchingly, it's like Benjamin Button. We're living our life backwards. We get this bit first and then later on we'll get the thing in which we're married and have kids and that's what I want to do. There's a lot of stuff about the fans. I mean, of course there is. There's the karaoke siren saying, well, the fans did all this. But actually, I have no problem with fan culture. I think sneering at fan culture is sniffy and boring and, and I, I disapprove of it. And the fans are clearly the people who put One Direction on the map and good for them. The songs, as far as they're concerned, I kind of like them. They do some cover versions that I really like. They did a version of uh, Teenage Dirtbag. They do a version of One Way or Another. They've, I, have they got some Comsat songs in there? There are no Comsat songs at all, which is a shame because they probably should have done that. There's also, you know, there are some very touching little fleeting moments talking to their parents. One of the parents says, you know, the thing is, you've got to remember, he went out for an audition and he never came home. Another bit in which a father says, I'm from rural Ireland. He's seen the world. There is nothing that I can tell him. Another bit when a mother says, I should be taking him round, but it's him bringing me to America. That's really strange. Another bit in which, you know, one of them does that classic thing about buying a house for their mum while the mum is on the phone. I know this is all stage managed. I know this is all packaged. I understand all that. But despite the fact there's a long scene in which we see them being carefully stage dressed, when one of 
them's doing an interview wearing a Doors t-shirt. I didn't sit there thinking you've been told to wear that Doors t-shirt. I actually thought you might genuinely quite like the Doors. Is it is it better than the Jonas Brothers movie? Yes, that it's we better than the Jonas see. Brothers movie. It is better than the Justin Bieber movie. Um, it it'll work really well for the fan. The fans will absolutely love it, and the non-fans will enjoy it much more than they thought they were going to. I mean, it's not an edgy Morgan Spurlock movie by any means, but he has brought something to it. And you know what? I've now seen it twice, and I didn't get bored.